evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, from Zoom and also our Facebook audience. Welcome to FSM One Webinar with Menu Life Investment Management. Okay, for this evening, we have invited Mr. Ng Zihao. He's the head of retail wealth distribution of Menu Life Investment Management to elaborate on mega trends that are impacting our investment decisions and also talk a bit about the Menu Life Global Thematic Fund. So before that, allow me to give a brief profile of Mr. Ng. So based in Malaysia, Mr. Ng is the head of retail wealth distribution of Many Life Investment Management. So he has over 20 years of experience in the financial services industry, covering asset management, banking, and life insurance sectors in Malaysia. He most recently served as the chief agency officer in the Northern Region of a multinational insurer in Malaysia. And he also served as the chief executive and director at the asset management arm of the insurer. Previously, he held several senior leadership roles at leading multinational and local asset managers in Malaysia. And now let us welcome Mr. Ng to give his presentation. Thank you. Hi, good evening, everyone. Hi, good to see all of you here. You know, before we start talking about invest in the mega trend, invest in the world ahead, you know, I would like to ask everyone here, um, what is the purpose of your investment? Uh, why are you investing? Are you investing to generate better growth? Or are you investing for yourself? Or are you investing because it is low interest rate? Or I personally invest for a big purpose. I personally invest for my loved one. So who is the person that you love the most? Do you have a picture in your mind right now? You know, investing for the person that you love the most is very different than investing to make money. All right, we will talk about it in a short while, but let me show you my next slide on the screen. What you can see is um, I'm representing Manulife. We are a worldwide company. You know, worldwide, we are managing uh, a trillion dollars. So we are operating uh, in, in US, in Canada, in Europe, and many countries in Asia. And in the next slide, uh, what you can see is um, we are rated by SMP uh, as a single A company uh, worldwide. Uh, that means we are one notch uh, higher. We are we are one notch higher. We are one notch higher uh, than the country. So um, in terms of AUM, we are managing four trillion ringgit. So that is three times the GDP of Malaysia. So that is the amount of money that we are managing. And in Malaysia, we are top five asset management company uh, in equities uh, and fixed incomes. So uh, we are listed entity in Toronto, in Asia, and also in Malaysia. All right. So now what is our uh, market outlook? You know, if I can show you our market outlook, and here in this part, I think for the first five minutes, you got to go through with my pace very quickly, all right? Follow my pace is you read from the left all the way to your right. And the right represent the current situations and the current indicator, all right? So that is what we do very quickly. If you look at the global business survey, we are now in expansion mode. So from left to right, you can see the COVID where we are not expanding, but we went down and we are now up expansionary. And this is where we are. We are back to where we were before the COVID in terms of business. Next, again, from left to right, if you look at the global trade, the productions are rebounding. So other than the global financial crisis, we had a recent crisis and you can see the update. We are here for global trade rebound. All right, next, very quickly, some market outlook for the global central banks, be it US, European or Asian central bank, they are keeping interest rate at all time low. So your FB is not giving you 
the returns to the depositors. So everything is going up, but not the interest rate. So the next slide, very exciting. If I look at the global bank's balance sheet, you know, as we are speaking now, they are not just stabilizing, but picking up. So the bank's balance sheet are looking pretty good, pretty cool, all right? Next. So this is an interesting slide, okay? From global, I'm now moving into US. Is US in good shape, good conditions or not? The indicators are telling me US is now at a very exciting moment. If you look at this, the US retail sales are going parabolic. And even though you should unwind, but this is exponential growth. So US retailer are consuming, are investing. And because of that, if you look at the next screen, all right, the US money supply, you know, as I say, you look from left to right, you know, US money supply are through the roof. So US money supplies are doing extremely well. The next one, the S&P 500 index is still climbing, it's still going record high. All right, uh, I've given you global market outlook and US money supply through the roof. No US, people are spending, retail sales are up and the US equity market, the S&P 500, are still climbing, all right? So that is where we stop. And I'm going to introduce a fund that is largely focused, all right, in the US recovery as well. First, we have got the global thematic fund. Later on, I will move on to a Sharia global REIT fund and an Asia Pacific REIT fund. That will do very well, all right, in this market. Okay, so in this world, we have got mega trends. What are mega trends? Mega trends are, you know, long-term uh, thematic that um, you want to hang on because that is the circular trend that is growing. It's almost like unstoppable. So urbanization is a mega trend. Technology is a mega trend. So when you want to invest in a mega trend, urbanizations, people are moving into the cities. So you have got infrastructures coming up. You have got more 5G coming up. You have got more online educations coming up. So urbanization is a global trend. Technology is a global trend. That is what we are doing now. Demographic in terms of so, uh, demographic changes, social changes, all right, is a, a mega trend. And then resources is another uh, mega trend, scarcity. All right, next. So we have got multiple team in this world. I've shown you a few just now. And if you are investing into what we call a thematic fund, maybe you are investing into a healthcare fund. That is only investing into a mega trend of healthcare. If you are investing into a technology fund, you are investing into one mega trend, technology trend. So what I really like about this fund that I'm talking about is the fund managers invest in multiple teams. So it's not just one team, not two teams, but the fund managers are choosing the most exciting team for you. So technology is good, but we had a bad experience of dot-com crisis. If you are investing into multiple teams, you can avoid crisis by just investing into one team. All right, next, what do we have? In this fund, it is very active and unconstrained. You know, it is very US-centric, but it, don't, it, not, it doesn't necessarily follow one region or big cap or small cap or one style value or growth or dividend. It is quite active and unconstrained whenever the fund manager think that this is the mega trend. This is the future. This is the stocks that will appreciate in price with the long-term trend. 
then the fund manager will say, I buy. All right. I like about this fund is because, you know, the performance is great. So, you know, to give you a, a snippet of it, you know, the fund, if you are invested since the year 2019, the fund has grown by 61% posit positively. And if you are invested last year, the fund has generated a positive return of more than 40%. Not only that, this is a five-star rated uh, unit trust fund and is managed by a, a global uh, fund manager by the name of Allianz Global Investors. So, you know, um, we like it very much. Another good example is here. You know, if you look at year 2017, the fund manager identified a few key teams, all right? And in the year of 2018, the teams moved on and expanded. And in the year of 2019, the fund manager has decided, all right, to take out the, the China impact, to take out the electrical vehicle, and to go in, into something that the fund manager felt at that time a team that will generate better returns at that point in time, all right? So you don't have to think about how do you diversify, when do you do a switch for this? You know, you can rely on the fund managers to choose the right team for you. So I purposely have this slide to show you because in the year of 2020, the team has changed again. It's no longer the same thematic play in the year of 2017. It looked quite different. So year 2021, you know, what are the thematic plays? I will give you some examples. At the same time, I will keep you very entertained with a few interesting videos. All right. So the first thing, people are moving into the cities, right? And people, you got people, you got aging populations, and you got young generations. And you know what? The young generations, like my daughter, you know, they, they, don't, they don't watch TV. They don't even own a TV, for example. So this trend of urbanizations that the youngsters are growing up with computer games. And it's a big time business when I talk about this, referring it to esports. You know, when I play computer games on my own, all right? when I have my leisure time. That is just computer games. But the youngsters are now participating in sports over the internet. So that is e-sports. It's a trend that you can't stop because this trend in terms of the audience and supporters is actually bigger than people watching the FIFA football. More audience than the NBA basketball is more popular than the Olympics right now among the youngsters. And for that, we have got good stocks to buy. An example of uh, uh, e-sports is electronic arts. Another, another uh, stock example will be Square Enix. So if you look at these two stocks, they have all grown up by the hundreds of percentage because the youngsters are crazy over e-sports. So in eSports, you have a team, you have a coach, you have a manager, you have got big audience to watch you playing your tournament and in, in big, you know, in big hall and also in virtual. So I sponsor my own daughter in eSports, a couple of hundred ringgit every month. So I show you a video for us to visualize how big this market is. eSports, all right? Some stocks that you must buy. Huge 28 to 3, 22 minutes in. The quickest in this series. He goes down and across the map. They will go to the world championships as the number one seed. He's got to go. With hundreds of millions of hardcore gamers and thousands of global tournaments each year, computer games are well on their way to becoming the world's biggest sports. And at the center of everything is a whole new breed of celebrity 
the esports superstar. I guess essentially I'm a 21 year old who's <laughs> a millionaire through gaming. Yo, I'll take it. <laughs> The best players have left their bedrooms to compete in the world's biggest stadiums. Offered up athletic visas and sports scholarships, athletes play for up to 18 hours a day in dedicated gaming houses, always under the watchful eyes of their agents and coaches. For those who work hard and keep their heads together, real fame and wealth await, with cash prizes going into the millions. But as quickly as their stars can rise, they can also come crashing down when the pressure of top-level competition proves too much to handle. With the screaming fans, the huge cash prizes, and above all, the glory, the pressure has never been this great. Welcome to the world of esports. All right, thank you very much. So ladies and gentlemen, if you understand esports, you want to get into some stocks that will fly high with esports that is trendy now. So the next one, the next team, guess what is it? All right, okay, after some good fun, let's look at the real technology. Some say the tech stock are good buy, but you know the technology stocks are definitely good, good buy, but you know, don't just buy the, the FANG stock, the, the Facebook, the Amazon, because those are very big cap, all right? Not that it's no good, but we want to get something that is even more interesting. In this example about technology, the fund managers are buying into global payments. Payments. From what I know last time, payments are done over the counter with cash. Maybe with credit card, with check, with ATM, and now with e-wallets. What else do you have? This particular company, Global Payments, supported hundreds of countries with new ways of payments. You know, some fancy way of payments. The other stock example, Square. So if you are a new startup business, you are finding ways to manage your vendor, manage your customers. You want a way, you want a company to give you a point-to-point -point supply in terms of payment functions, uh, invoices, check, uh, 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 receipts, and things like that. You go to this public listed company called the Square. All right, it is a one-stop solutions provider. So these new technology companies are gaining market shares. People are spending on them and investors are buying these stocks. Let's watch the next one. <laughs> Okay, so this is a video of a company called Worldline that the fund managers have investment in it. You know, Worldline. Just now what I've shown you is a company called Global Payments. If you pay attention to 
what is written down there, he has got more than 3 million customers, all right? And it's supported 140 types of payment methods. So this is at the forefront of companies dealing with money. So uh, don't just be amazed with um, uh, our, our e-payments in Malaysia. There are a lot more than that for global standard companies uh, like what I've introduced. So next, what do we have? That is an important team. So health technology is another one. If you buy into a technology stock, you may not get this. And if you buy into a healthcare stock, that is very traditional managed, you may not get this. But I want to introduce two health technology stocks to you. One is by the name of Teladoc Health. So what is it? Very simple, all right? You just go into the internet, look for a doctor, or look for a medical practitioner's opinion, all right? And they are not just patients up there. They are a group of uh, maybe research company who wants uh, a doctor's opinion, for example. They are also using, all right, a, a platform created by Teladoc Health. So the other stock example is Intuitive Surgical. So they produce and manufacture some of the world's largest robotic arms and robotic equipment to help doctors completing their uh, operations because robotics is very high and precise, very high precision. So with that, you know, I'm not sure whether we have the next video for you, but I think it's going to be very exciting. Yes, there is one called M3, all right? So this is M3, another platform. At M3 Global Research, Healthcare. we know how important quality data is to making key decisions. And we realize that doing research to find life-saving treatments is a big investment, which is why we continue to invest in assembling the best panel in the business, made up of millions of doctors that already rely on M3's global network of web communities every day. Whether it's a resident in the US starting her career on MD Links, a surgeon in the UK using doctors.net for continuing education, a radiologist in China finding a medical conference to attend on MedLive. A PA in France looking into a new drug on Vidal and reading a related study on it at M3 Medical. A specialist in Japan sharing his latest findings on a rare infectious disease on M3.com. An endocrinologist in India finding a new treatment for diabetes on M3 India or a paediatrician in South Korea, viewing a video lecture on neonatal care on Medigate. That's why the relationship we have with our doctors is unique. We know our panel better than anyone because we've been engaging for years. M3 Global Research gives you unparalleled access to the highly engaged, first-rate doctors your research deserves. We continuously invest in and expand our panel, adding new healthcare professionals every day. Allowing you to reach more than 4 million respondents in 248 markets across 70 countries. And we use the latest technology to accelerate payment for communication and to ensure adherence to compliance requirements. We make it possible with a dedicated panel team made up of 60 full-time staff members from 12 countries that speak 17 different languages. It's real people talking to real people to get real answers. So, in addition to giving you the most engaged panel in the world, it's also the most cared-for panel in the world. Your research demands it, and our panelists deserve it. Ask us today how we can deploy our panel team on your next project and provide a customized solution. Better data, better insight, better decisions, better All right. period. M3 Global Re Okay, so we are investor in this company as well, M3. So, you know, from the beginning until now, I told you that this is multiple team. And multiple team is good because the farm manager can switch from one to another. So how many teams have I covered that the fund managers is currently investing in? So you got eSports, you got global payments, you know, the money thing, 
and you have got uh, healthcare technology. And the next one is equally important, is the new generation energy. All right, so what is that? It's about, you know, solar panel. It's about uh, uh, um, uh, hydro. It's about um, a company like this, Austat. So Austat is a global leader in developing and constructing and supplying uh, this uh, wind energy. All right, so, you know, you want to buy into a company because people are speaking about climate change. People are more conscious about being environmental friendly. So when you buy your electrical goods at home, you also want to get that energy savings type. So electrical vehicles are getting more popular right now. The farm managers, if you remember just now, in the year of 2017, they were very upbeat and they bought into electrical vehicle. But in 2018 and 2019, they actually gone out. You know, they are no longer investing in electrical vehicle. Why is it so? Because they found something that is higher in profit margin, a business that Abama here is producing, the battery for electrical vehicle. So this company, having good earnings, having good share price performance, because they are dealing with new generations energy. All right. So that is another very important team that we eat, sleep, you know, and live with it every day. So the next one, all right. So as um, these particular farm managers must be quite busy looking at the team, let's come back to remote work. So it's a team of how do you operate in this business world or in your family without spending time next to each other. So I can't sign a check, you know, last time, uh, unless I have a check right in front of me. And I can only sign on a piece of paper. A company called DocuSign has got more than 500,000 customers and it is now operating in more than 180 countries. And it makes e-signature, electronic signature, possible and convenient. So nowadays, people like me and all my colleagues here, they, we, we, we work from home. So how do we actually sign documents? Of course, we sign on our computer, on our laptop, on a panel. And these are all very exciting because a company like DocuSign is leading you know, the industry as market leader. Another one, Team Viewer. I'm not too sure whether are you using this company's platform or not. But if you look at the statistics, 400,000 downloads every day. 400,000 downloads every day, okay? And for them to start to now, 2 billion of devices are being connected to Team Viewer. And at any one point, they have got 45 million users at any point in any day. So team viewers allow you and me not in the same place, but I can see what you are seeing. I can instruct you very clearly. For example, you know, if you don't know how to change your tire because you are miles away, you know, at a very, at a place that I can't reach you, as long as you have got the internet services, you have team viewer, I have team viewer, I can see the situation you are in very clearly. So if you are operating on an ocean, all right, you are exploring oil and you are getting yourself into some very difficult moments, you need help, SOS. So me in the office can see exactly what you are doing and actually instruct you. So I remote control, remote manage your situation. Can you imagine to disable a bomb? You know, a, a team viewer will be very important telling you which cable to cut, whether is it the yellow one or the red cable to cut, things like that. All right. So these are stocks that are doing extremely well in this uh, new norm and the new world. So the other one, uh, very simple. We, we need quality waters and we need uh, good waters because we want to 
consume the best. So they are water company, aqua company. They are, um, they are um, doing very well because the consumers or the governments are putting their money where their mouth is. Uh, Zilum is a US-based company. Uh, they are also helping out with certain projects with the governments of uh, Singapore and also in Middle East because they invent water, they recycle water, they retreat water and things like that. So I have got two stock examples for you here, Zilum and another one, American Water Works. That has got more than 100 years of history, all right? And they are listed. Next, okay, pet economy. So this is very interesting. Uh, when I speak to uh, many investors, uh, and many investors ask me, so um, Zihao, are you launching uh, an AI fund or not? AI fund, artificial intelligence. Many of them asked me last year. So I, I, I say I, I don't like one single thematic fund. And I say, by the way, do you know that for last year, even the pet economy are doing better than AI? as a thematic or as an industry. Because uh, in US, in China, uh, even in certain big, many big countries like Europe and even India, say whatever you like about India, uh, the COVID situation. Let me tell you, there are more pets than, um, the, the pets are growing faster than the human populations. And I'm talking about pets I'm not referring to stray dogs or stray cats. I'm talking about, you know, the real pet industry. So we have got food for, food for the pets, healthcare for the pets, and even insurance for the pets. And some of these companies that are listed, uh, especially in the US, are doing extremely well. So seeing is believing. I will show you a video right now. All right, Cute let you see. Kittens, Instagram dogs. Americans are spending more and more on their pets. And at Morris Animal Inn, cats are also vacationing in style. The inn offers luxury accommodations, including condos and kitty suites with plush beds and TVs. Meals for pets, just like this one, made with human-grade ingredients. That's become the standard for the emerging trend of fresh dog food. U.S. pet spending hit $72 billion in 2018, about $3 billion more than the year before. And if you look at the data since 1994, you can see how rapidly the industry is growing. The pet industry's growth isn't showing any signs of slowing down. In the United States, the number of dogs and cats could increase faster than the human population, according to one forecast. People are even taking out pet insurance plans to help pay for medical procedures and help their pets live longer. Here's how Americans' love for pets turned into big business. Americans love pets. In 2018, about two out of every three U.S. households owned a pet. Dogs and cats remain the two most popular companion animals in U.S. homes. Birds and horses come in at a distant third and fourth on that list. The number of cats and dogs in the United States is predicted to increase at a faster rate than the U.S. population in the five years from 2019 to 2024. Humans and their pets are attached at the hip. Once a clear delineation between master and servant, the human-pet relationship has changed significantly over the last 30 years and brought humans and animals far closer together. All right, so these are some, you know, pet stocks example. You know, just now the video, if I continue playing, you will see this industry, the pet industry, there, there is the index, the pet index. You know, the pet index over the last five years has grown by 205%. You know, uh, my colleague Sally stopped the video, but that is okay. So these are some stock example that is dealing with pet, the insurance, the pet insurance company, the healthcare company, and also the pet food company. They are all doing very well, all right? If you just Google this stock, you will know how well it has done. So this is another team that our farm managers are investing into. Let me move on to the next. Just now I told you, you know, the farm managers are active and unconstrained, so they play their teams differently. 
So tell you what, all right? It was just in the month of March 2021, last month, you know, the get out totally from education. Education was a popular theme, all right, in their definition. They still like educations, especially online educations. They are doing very well. However, the fund managers say we have made enough and we want to move on. And they moved on to infrastructure. And they don't just get into the old traditional uh, infrastructures. There are some names that I can show you. The fund managers are buying. It's all in, on your screen. I will just show you one example about why infrastructure can be very modern, can be very important. All right. Let's watch another two minutes of this company that is listed. All right. Let's enjoy. Have a clear purpose to reimagine mining to improve people's lives. What does that mean? Well, it means changing the way we mine and the nature of our relationships with all our stakeholders across society, including how everyone connects what we do with their everyday lives, from the mine to all of our homes and families. How? By future smart mining. Smart innovation in technology, digitalization, and sustainability working hand in hand to more efficiently, effectively, and sustainably connect metals and minerals to all of us who need and value them. This is about creating a different future for what is an essential activity for modern life. Future Smart Mining, changing the future of mining. We're building okay, for the interest of time, and reliability Sammy, let's move on. Provided by we have okay. a so that is the, one of the reasons that for fund managers get out from online educations and get into infrastructure is because under the Biden's administration, he has just announced, you know, a stimulus package of two trillions US dollars for the next few years to come. So let me tell you things that is related with infrastructure, you know, the pump prime economy these stocks are going to benefit because you know what is on the table is us dollars two trillions for the years to come so the fund managers are good they make a quick decision last month move quickly into the infrastructure stocks all right so what are the what is your favorite uh, team after looking at so many you know last year actually the new generation energy has done well then you got digital life, the healthcare, the education is no longer there. We replace it with infrastructure. The pet economy, as I say, has even performed better than AI. But AI is, remains important, just like clean water, clean energy. So let the farm manager decide. All right, next. Okay, so what is this global thematic fund all about? It is being modern staying ahead, invest in the mega trend, invest in the future, all right? And we like it because it's not narrow, it's very well diversified, and the farm managers can rotate unconstrained, all right? And uh, for that, we know the fund has got all potential to give you better returns. So this is the feeder fund as investors, you are buying into the Malaysia Manulife thematic fund, but we fit into an Allianz Global Thematic Fund, all right? This is the performance. If you look at the performance, you know, one-year performance, it was looking very good. The two, the six months, the last six months performance, three months performance, one month performance, year-to-date performance. If you look at it, you know, Thematic Fund is actually very exciting because you are buying into the consumer reason you are buying into the mega trend, all right? And that gives you good return. So AI, esports, digital life, health tech, infrastructure, pet economy, the new generations of energy, you name it, you know, they have it, all right? And with that, I want to uh, stop here and say, 
you know, I felt very excited speaking about that fund. But I want to quickly spend the last five minutes talking about the traditional REITs. The, tra the traditional REITs are basically investment into tangible assets, especially the commercial building, the retail building, if not the shopping mall, then the big factories and warehouse. And here we are with your 10,000 ringgit or 100,000 ringgit or a million ringgit, we are able to expose you to millions and billions worth of property. So why is it a good time to buy into REIT now? So let me explain this to you. If I look at the world market, many stocks and many sectors has recovered and improved even last year during the pandemic and the lockdown time. All right, you name it they have all recovered. But REITs was the last sector to recover because it was waiting for economy opening up for vaccination. But at this point that I'm speaking to you, I'm glad to tell you that even the REITs being the last sector, it has recovered, all right? And you still get to enjoy uh, about 5% uh, dividend payout. So investing in REITs, you are getting, number one, dividend payout, 5% or so. Number two, you get the price appreciation because as physical property, it will appreciate in prices, all right? So that is why you invest in REITs. And what you need to know about REITs are basically, you know, are the tenants good? Are you getting the good dividend? Is the property being rented out at a good price? Who is the property manager? Who is the anchor uh, uh, tenants in the property? And um, is the property good? Are they borrowing a lot from the banks? So for that, leave it to the farm managers. We choose the best REITs for you. And we choose the best manager of REITs for you. So on the screen next, let me just show you. So this is very important about why are people investing into REITs. So if you look at the total income of the, the total uh, uh, yield, um, i.e. the rental that you can expect by investing into Australia REIT, UK REIT, Hong Kong REIT, the Japan REIT, Singapore REIT, if not the US REIT, they are way higher than what you can get from the interest or the coupon payout from bonds, bond investments pays regular coupons. You know, fixed deposit pays you interest, bonds pays you coupon, but the interest and coupons are getting very low. So if you are buying into a REIT fund like this, so what you can expect is the fund managers diversify the REITs worldwide for you. And that is the kind of returns that you can expect. As I said just now, it is still very prudent for me to tell you, you can expect a dividend payout of 4.5% to 5%, if not higher, in time ahead, all right? So um, you see, REITs is not necessarily condominium and shopping. In fact, in some of our REIT fund, we buy into the new norm REITs. What are the new norm REITs? People work from home, people do online shopping. So we have got data center REITs. So these are property that house data center, that plays with cloud computing. So cloud computing is not up in the sky, but is in you know, physical buildings that we call data centers. So big time uh, properties company build data centers and rent it out to tenants who need, you know, big buildings like this. They don't build and own, all right? They just rent. So REITs has got good rental for us to invest for you and pay out rental for you. At the same time, the property, if appreciates in prices, over the next 10 years or 15 years, if the properties and buildings double, all right, double in price, you know, 
that property gains in appreciations is hundred almost a hundred percent yours. So not only that, you have got data centers, you got industrial because you do a lot of online shopping. You know, guess what? You need warehouse. You need logistics. Many of these warehouse and logistics that is run by uh, many of these online shopping companies, they don't own it. You know, these are warehouse being rented out. So who are the players behind? It's the REITs company. So we are investing into REITs as well. All right, if I can move on. So the other REITs uh, that are very popular in this new norm REIT is uh, uh, the healthcare REITs. Uh, so these are medical homes, if not uh, 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 homes that is very well equipped with medical equipment, uh, very suitable for uh, the aging populations. Uh, if they are not staying with their children or if they are staying alone, you know, they will be in this very safe place. That is not a hospital, but, you know, good medical homes. So these are examples of REITs. So like what I say just now, if you look at uh, the screen right now, so under this uh, Biden's administrations, you know, a lot of investments is going to come for infrastructure. The pump prime economy is going to take place in US. So I particularly like US exposed or US related funds, or maybe a US centric fund. For example, all right, our, our global REIT, uh, the one that I've shown you buying into a lot of these uh, American towers, the 5G REITs, you know, these are US centric REITs. Uh, the thematic fund that I've shown you just now is also very US centric. So, you know, uh, you can own this, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, how many of you own um, towers, telecommunication towers? So for me, as a fund manager, if I buy into American Tower Corp that is listed, immediately I expose you into something like 200,000 uh, of these uh, towers. So you immediately own 200,000 of towers. You own not just uh, 200,000 of shopping malls in Australia, uh, you own hundreds of thousands of uh, car park in, in Hong Kong that is being tenanted. And you also have got opportunities to own hundreds of thousands of uh, telecommunications uh, uh, centers like this. So 5Gs are important. Uh, your online shopping is important. So these are the ones that transmit the data. So if you look at American, uh, 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 tower corps. So over the last five years, the return is as high as a uh, hundred and sixty percent. So you know, property investing is not just about buying a house, buying a bungalow, buying a shop house. Those are good. Continue doing that, but you know, expose uh, your loved one, and that's why just now at the very early stage, I was asking every one of you here, who are your loved ones. And if you are investing for your loved ones, like how I'm investing for my princess, my only daughter, you know, these are important to me. So another stock example, Crown Castle. You own towers and towers in the US. If I have got the next examples for you, ladies and gentlemen, in my next slides, another read counter is by the name of Digital Realty. So this is the one that builds warehouse, offices, you know, factories, logistic warehouse, the big, big ones that you can imagine and rent it out to some of these top fortune 500 companies. Some of these big, big companies, they don't build only uh, in their own property. They just, they just rent it and operate. So digital reality is a good, you know, REIT company, they build uh, a lot of properties and by investing in one digital realty, just one counter, you own a lot of 
you know, big warehouses and data centers. All right. So that is what we do. Um, this is the, the, the most powerful uh, REIT in Hong Kong by the name of Ling REIT. So over the last 10 years, if you have invested in Ling REIT, you know, uh, you basically make something like uh, 100 over 200%. So again, if you buy into Ling REIT, you have got hundreds of units of properties and car parks in Hong Kong and China. So why, why REITs now? So REITs to me is a good diversification. Uh, you know, it, it serves a lot of purpose. You are buying into something that is tangible. And as I said just now, you know, in all recovery, I'm very comfortable with REITs because these are something that is tangible, that you can see, you can touch. If you walk into the shopping mall, you know that building is yours when you buy into the REITs. Okay, so if I want to jump a few slides, all right? So if you invest in REITs, I got the global REITs, I have got the Asia Pacific REITs, and when do you get pay out for your uh, dividend? So the global one, we pay your dividend in May and November of every calendar year. And the Asia Pacific one, we pay you the rental in February and August. We declare dividend and we start a uh, 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 payment. Uh, most of the customers choose to reinvest. That is fine. Very good. But if I just want to show you the recent example, even with COVID, the REITs went down, but it has recovered. You know, if I want to put an average indications to how much can you make by investing into REITs, whether is it Asia Pacific or the global REITs, a good benchmark will be something close to 10%. So we have done a lot of analysis, you know, be it five years, three years, the last 10 years. If I look at it, you get very good returns. So this one is our track record of our Asia Pacific REITs. So if you look at the screen, you get uh, 2016 performance, 17 performance, 2018 was down a little bit, but 19 was up again, double digit returns. 2020 was down because of COVID, but here we are recovering very strongly. But the more important message I want to send out in this slide is the table below. In good or bad time, we are still paying out your dividend. So if you look at 1617182019, even in year 2020, 2021, we have been paying out and declaring dividend to our investors. So what is next? So these are our funds. So remember, diversification is good for you. You know, I started, you know, uh, with uh, Global Outlook and then with US Outlook. I'm so excited with US Outlook because money supply is through the roof. You know, retail shoppers are spending their money. Consumers are really spending and that's why S&P 500 is climbing. And then I went into a thematic fund and I went into the REIT fund. And do I have a last message after the last one hour? Yes, I have. What is the message? Think about your loved ones and think about your own style. The stock market is a, is a device for transferring your wealth or one's wealth from the impatient to those who are patient. So with that, I want to say thank you everyone and thank you FSM for having me here. I hope you enjoy the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boog. Now uh, we would like to move on to the Q&A. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, feel free to actually type it in the chat. Okay, so Mr. Ng, we have got one question uh, with regards to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Would you be able to uh, share your insight on it? The, this is from an FB user. It's asking whether cryptocurrency or Bitcoin would become one of the future payment options. All right, you know, uh, th thanks for the questions. Uh, I think cryptocurrency has generated a lot of wealth for a lot of people. 
a lot, a lot. Um, especially traders. People who knows how to get in and out at the right price, I'm sure they will have made good money. However, I'm not too sure about this long-term trend myself. I'm not very sure about this because cryptocurrencies are built based on how many coins I manufacture and at what price are people willing to pay for. It is still lack of certain fundamentals in my personal opinion. So it is a good vehicle uh, for your investment, for your speculations. But if you ask me to talk to you about, you know, uh, uh, like healthcare, I can talk to you about why healthcare is important because people are falling sick, people are aging, or they are newborn babies. I can articulate very well. You know, if you ask me about REITs, I can tell you people are going into shopping malls and people are buying properties, all right? And if you ask me whether US market is good or not, I can share with you the stimulus package, the economy indi indicator. Cryptocurrency has gone up and has done very well. Every time my guess is it will come down, but instead it went up higher, all right? So I'm not encouraging everyone to go into cryptocurrency. If you have spare money, you just want to play for the fun of it, I think that is okay. I will personally prefer something that is more, reg more regulated, uh, that I'm more in control. I know the fund managers are doing it personally. All right? So thank you for the questions. Good. Okay, with regards to US, uh, there is a question uh, comparing um, Malaysia real estate to US real estate. How is it different? Yeah. Okay, my, my quick answer is going to be, if you are buying one or two properties, you will prefer to own it here because, you know, it's more relevant. However, I'm talking about REITs fund, all right? Uh, the REITs fund will give you worldwide, you know, uh, 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 diversification. Uh, I'm not too sure about the question. So if your question is, uh, you are sending your kid to US for studies, and if you want to buy one property or two property or a few property in US, I think it, that is good because my, my older brother has migrated to US because of work and the kids are growing up. I look at the properties that my elder brother has been buying. It's you know, good because after the last subprime, crisis in the year of 2007, 2008, the property prices has done well. But for that, Malaysian's property prices has also done well. But I'm referring to a lot more than that. I'm talking about buying thousands and thousands of American towers. I'm referring to buying worldwide, maybe 50 billions worth of properties with just one counter. You know, just now I shown you one stock example. Even with digital reality, you become a landlord of Fortune 500 companies. So, okay, it serves many different purposes. Thank you for the questions. Do you have any insight on the electric vehicle companies such as Tesla, Toyota, etc.? <laughs> All right. It's, okay, you know, what I can say for sure is EV is going to be the trend. Our thematic fund was into EV, all right, two or three years ago. We get out from EV doesn't mean that we don't like EV. We just buy different parts like the battery of the EVs. For example, if you like technology, you don't have to buy, you know, a, a, a handphone or a computer to call yourself uh, you like technology. You can buy the chips. You can buy a semiconductor to say you are into technology play. So I think EV is the way to go EV has got bright future, you know, um, Tesla, Toyota, hybrid, you name it, uh, the, the, the EV battery uh, suppliers are doing extremely well. Just do some Google search, you will know all the EV, most of the EV counters are doing extremely well. Okay, but we are no longer there. We are now getting ourselves more into infrastructure, for example. All right? Sure, sure. Okay, uh, with regards to your Manila Sharia Global REIT, uh, there is an investor who's asked whether does this fund include Singapore? In yes, 
yes, uh, thanks for the questions. Uh, our, our global REITs has got exposure, big exposure in Asia Pacific. Uh, and uh, um, if I can give you some numbers, um, our Sharia Global REITs is about 50% invested in US, maybe 10%, about 10% in Europe, and 10% in Australia, New Zealand, Japan. And the remaining 30%, all right, is actually in Asia. And if you look at Asia, the most established REIT market, there are basically two countries. One is Hong Kong, another one is Singapore. Singapore is the place for a lot of REITs player to list their counter in the Singapore Stock Exchange. It doesn't mean the underlying properties are in Singapore. There are many REITs company that are listed in the Singapore Stock Exchange but the underlying properties are not in Singapore. They could be, um, you know, industrial park in Malaysia, industrial parks in China, industrial parks in India, you name it, or even data centers in US. And they are building more and more uh, data centers in US by raising their capital in the Singapore Stock Exchange. Why is it so? Um, from what I understand, you know, uh, as investors, uh, there are many reasonings. Uh, first, I think Singapore is very successful in building themselves as a commercial center. So naturally, a lot of local, even overseas REITs counter choose to be listed in Singapore. So as an international commercial hub. And in Singapore, there are a lot of uh, new migrants who are cash rich, who wants to diversify away from the low deposit rate that you can get in Singapore banks. So, you know, there's a natural tendency that the ultra rich or the mass affluent uh, 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 high net worth, you know, they will diversify into REITs. Like what I've shown you in my earlier slides, you know, the REITs, the dividend alone will beat the fixed deposit rate uh, 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 by, by a huge amount. So to answer the question, yes, we have got at least 30% um, exposure in Asia and a lot of it is actually Hong Kong and Singapore. Thank you for the questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there is a question. Uh, from audience with regards to a few Manulife China funds having experienced a huge correction recently. So what is the main cause and what is your view on this correction? Okay, if I, uh, thanks for the questions. Um, if I look at the Chinese equities, you know the Chinese equities, if you are, okay, let me put it this way. If you are a uh, Chinese equity investors over the last 10 years, I think your money must have grown by at least three folds or four folds. If you are investors of the Chinese equities for the last three to five years, you must have made at least 100% as well. If you are a Chinese equity investors for the last one year, all right, just last one year, you probably generated a positive return of close to 40 to 50%. However, you know, if you are asking me these particular questions, you must be referring to the period of end February to now, over the last two months. Over the last two months, the market was a bit choppy, was a bit bumpy, but that is what you can imagine in all markets. After the market gone out by, you know, let's say 50%, you expect the market to come down by, okay? So if I put it in mathematics, if a market if one ringgit, all right, grown out by 50% during a very short span of time, your one ringgit is now one ringgit 50 cents. For it to correct by 20%, you know, you are still having something like one ringgit 32 cents, all right? So you still make 32 cents in this market. So, you know, this is a very short-term volatility. 
short-term corrections. My long-term view over the next three years or five years, China is the market to be in as well. You know, if you look at their billions of populations, they are now being locked down, but they are reopening their economy. When they are being locked down, they spend in China, they drink in China, they eat in China, they do online shopping in China. So the Chinese companies will benefit from their consumerism. And they are very good with their technology. Chinese is way ahead, you know, it, by far with their technologies, if not some of their healthcare. All right. So um, we know what we are buying in China. The short term corrections, don't worry, it was only for the last two months. If you look at the last few days or the last two weeks, it has started to recover. So don't worry. We think this China trend will continue to grow and expand. You know, the US is so uh, uh, worried about the, the, the upcoming of China because, you know, China is going to, to be a real, you know, uh, uh, opponent uh, when it comes to trade uh, with US. All right. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ng. So, Mr. Ng, we have got a couple of questions with regards to Manulife India Equity Fund. A few of uh, our audiences are asking, what's your comment on this fund? And should they redeem now due to the pandemic? Hello? Sorry, so is there a question on India Equity Fund? Yeah, yeah. The, they, they're asking whether should they redeem now due to the pandemic, yeah. Okay, let me let me tell you something about India, Indian situations that you may know or you may not know. What you know for sure is, you know, the new wave of pandemic is killing India. It's, it's killing and and taking away a lot of uh, lives in India. And that is very true. If you look at the headlines on the daily basis, 300,000 per day recently. And that is quite scary. That, that, that is what you know, okay? I'm sure. But what you may or may not know is, um, by now, I think um, people who has received the vaccinations uh, from now to maybe um, May is approaching 100 million. 100 million uh, of their populations being vaccinated. They are moving at a very fast rate in terms of their vaccination. So if it's close to 100 million, you can imagine over the next couple of months, it will be hundreds of millions being vaccinated. But if that is not good enough to convince anyone here about, uh, about uh, uh, the corrections in the India equities, uh, because of what happens, uh, the 300,000 cases per day is really scaring the investors. But let me tell you, um, isn't this what we have gone through in March last year? In March last year, when Malaysia was first locked down, you know, the world equities was being sold down, bond was sold down, everything was sold down, and we call it a black swan. And not too long after that, you know, almost every night uh, I'm invited to speak and I got to show you a lot of statistics about pandemic uh, may cause market to go down, but it will not cause the market to go down for more than six months, for example. So I think whatever is this wave or even the longest wave of any historical pandemic, it doesn't sink. A stock market performance for too long. So last year when I was talking about it, you know, if you miss last year for April and May, all right, last year, investment, all right, if you miss last year, April and May, you miss a lot. And if you don't invest, if you didn't invest in July and August and hold it till now, I'm sorry, again, you miss a lot. If you didn't invest in the month of November, when vaccine was first being announced and introduced, the market jumped because of that. Again, 
you miss a lot until February this year. So February market was going down because of many reasons, especially to me, people taking profits, all right? And um, as market has now more stable and recover, don't be overly worried about this India pandemic. You don't have to, you know, uh, pour your money to buy India equity right now. You can average, you can average up, all right? As, as investors, I look at this exactly like last March, last May, last July, last November. Any corrections of this pandemic will lead, will lead us to something that is higher because, you know, like it or not, the industry will go, will grow. The economy, if it's being shut down, it will be opened up. All right. We need to eat, we need to consume, and we need to spend in our day-to-day -day activities. Whether I work from home, speaking to you in Zoom now, we got to spend on technology, on device, on our basic necessity. And India has got 1.4 billion populations, out of which their average uh, age is about 35 to 36. And they are growing richer and richer by standard. So it's one of the big countries that you shouldn't miss as part of your portfolio. So if you are existing investor, I know, you know, recently this, this new wave of COVID is scaring people off. But to me, not to worry. For new investors, look at it now. You know, uh, you can come in bit by bit batch by batch, I think you will be buying as, at some uh, uh, bottoming of the market. It will do you a lot of, a lot of good, just like Ch what I said about China a while ago. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lu, we have a question with regards to your global thematic fund. Yeah, because um, this fund there is uh, USD and MYRH, so they're asking which fund to pick with regards to both currencies, yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, which one to pick? Uh, actually, um, we, 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 we launched the, 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 the Ringgit H class, all right? Because yeah. the, the mother fund that we are buying into, just now I explained to you that this is a feeder fund. You know, I like the fund managers so much that as big as Manulife, we actually outsource it and feed it into the global another global fund manager by the name of Allianz Global Investors, all right? So Allianz Global Investors, the fund is denominated in US dollars. Our fund is denominated in ringgit. So ringgit and US dollars, these two, sometimes your performance will be impacted by the fluctuations of currency. So by hedging it, we get additional return because, you know, uh, by hedging it, we just get additional carry trade, number one. Number two, we minimize the risk between ringgit and US dollars, where the two funds are denominated. However, let me remind everyone that this is a global thematic fund. Even though I said just now, a lot of focus is actually in US, maybe 50 to 55%, the remaining is actually in Europe. The remaining is actually in Asia. When they buy a unique stock in Europe, they use their European currencies. When they buy Asian stocks, let's say a Chinese stock, you use you know, uh, uh, Hong Kong dollars, uh, if not uh, the Chinese currency. So you, just now someone asked me about Singapore. Do we have exposure, REITs exposure in Singapore? Yeah, when we buy in Singapore, you use Sing dollars. So your currencies are very well diversified. So if you think the US dollars are not going to do, are not going to do too well, all right? You think the US dollars will depreciate in value and you don't like the US dollars performance. 
then by all means, get into our Ringgit H class. That is why we design this share class. And I hope I give you some indicator and some hint about what I see in US dollar and why do we do that? We have a question uh, with regards to US. Yeah, uh, When do you anticipate US interest going up? All right. Thanks for the questions. I think for these questions, only the Federal Reserve will know. Uh, none of us know. And the, only the Fed will know. And the Fed will only know after they read the data. You know, they will be reading the data about recovery. You know, uh, are people spending uh, enough? And that's why I showed you in the slide just now. You know, money supply is through the roof. People are spending. So these are good economy data. Are they inflations or not? Because if they are inflations, means things are getting more and more pricey. And that is a worrying sign. It is too much. Then the US Fed may increase interest rate. However, having said all this, let me give you what I know about what Fed has made as public statement. They have said they don't see increase of interest rate over the next two years. So I got to take their words for good because as big as a COVID pandemic crisis, a lot of economies are not doing well. And that's why the US has need to come up with fiscal stimulus package, the monetary policy, and the fiscal policy, the monetary policy to keep interest rate low and the fiscal policy to spend on infrastructure. So I think these two will not go away because we have just witnessed a good early stage of recovery. All of us are more keen and interested with a sustainable recovery and a gradual steady recovery. So I don't think there will increase interest rate over the next one year or two years time. If there's any gas, it will be two years and beyond. So I will come back here in the next two years time and analyze with you about the interest rate scenario. When interest rate goes up, it doesn't mean it's bad. So we will analyze it in the next chapter, all right? Okay, Mr. Lu, maybe we'll take uh, one final question. This is sure. with regards to uh, social responsibility fund. Do you think such thematic investing will garner attention? Because uh, according to our audience, they are huge in the EU, but not in this okay. region. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. I will answer. Um, I will answer that in two parts. Number one, the ESG is it important or not? Is very highly regarded worldwide, okay? People are speaking about being environmental friendly. You know, people are speaking about cut down the emissions uh, and uh, use the new generation's energy and um, to prevent climate change to be environmental friendly, to be socially responsible. And that's why the ESG is a good thematic for people to get into, all right? And I think it will become even more and more important. However, all right, you don't have to be, you don't have to be buying a ESG fund to be a ESG supporter. Do you know why I say so? If you personally like ESG, you are a big fan of ESG, you like green, you like, you know, uh, solar energy, you like wind energy, you like water energy, all right? You don't have to be uh, uh, buying into an ESG. Let me just quote you an example, all right? The thematic fund that we have introduced to you just now is integrated with an ESG approach, meaning the fund managers are buying stocks that complies with ESG governance. If there is a stock that is not complying with the ESG component, let me tell you what, okay, 
the fund managers will not buy. And let me give you another example. Even for REITs, even for REITs, there are some small REITs owner that is not aware of the importance of ESG. But people like us, the fund managers, are going out there and tell them this. Uh, the REITs, uh, you know, the REITs owner, can I tell you this? The World International Fund Managers are asking, are you an ESG compliant REIT? Because if you are not ESG compliant, they are not investing into you. So this trend is getting early momentum. So even the REITs that I have spoken just now has got ESG integrations to it. So if you have a, a greenery uh, REIT or, no, or environmental friendly REIT, good, people are buying. Otherwise, people may not buy. So this is an important element that I see in the future trend. But I'm not saying go and choose an ESG fund and buy into it. Okay, I'm just saying they are ESG compliant counters that I think will outperform the non ESG counters if both being the same. All right, if the both are of equal value, they are in the same business. All right, it can be a trading business, it can be a, a, a technology business. If one is ESG and one is not, you can expect the ESG one to do far more better than the non-ESG compliant one. All right? Thank you so much, Mr. Ng. With that, we would like to end this webinar session. Thank you for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, we have finally come to the end of our webinar. And thank you for your time this evening. Thank you, Mr. Ng. So stay safe, everyone, and have a good night. Happy Megatrend. Happy Megatrend. <laughs> <Okay, sorry. laughs>